Last June, Apple announced their new lineup of laptops equipped with their next generation processor, the M2. Eh sakto naman for me, tumirik kahapon, July 15, yung MacBook Air 2015 ko. So, then it's a prank. So I decided to get the MacBook Air M1 2020 model. So ang tanong, kahit may M2 na, bakit M1 pa rin ang binili ko? At ang sagot? So read that again, slowly, with feelings. Di ka pa ni paniwala, no? According to MaxTech, the M1 MacBook Air 2020 beats the M2 MacBook Pro 13 2022 in real-world testing. Particularly interesting is how the laptop with the latest Apple chip gets demolished consistently by a 2-year-old model in photo and video editing. In Lightroom, the M1 MacBook Air performed almost twice as fast in processing 50 photos with 40 megapixels each. In video editing, the same thing happens as the M1 MacBook Air completes video rendering for a 4K material at half the time as the M2 MacBook Pro 13 2020. Wow, amazing, di ba? But as much as I want to elaborate on the entire process, YouTube Fair Use Policy prevents me to go further on the details. As such, I have provided the links to their test in the description for you to check. Suffice to say, for someone who wants to get the best value for his money, the MacBook Air 2020 is the clear winner in this comparison. So, the question is, was Apple lying when they were promoting the new MacBook Pro 13? Were they highlighted so much of the performance boost of the new M2 chip? Well, here's the big reveal. The M1 MacBook Air 2020 only beats the M2 MacBook Pro 13 base model. Base model means that this has no upgraded component and is the cheapest configuration a common user gets when they buy it in the store. So why is the M2 MacBook Pro 13 base model slower than the M1 MacBook Air? Sa mga computers, ang overall performance is the sum of all its individual components. Meaning, dapat kung mabilis ang processor mo, dapat mabilis din ang GPU mo, at ang SSD mo. Undeniably, the M2 is faster than the M1 chip. However, in the case of the M2 MacBook Pro 13 base model, Apple decided to use a slower setup for their SSD, which hampers the computer's overall performance. During highly intensive tasks, the computer uses the SSD as the temporary RAM in a process called memory swapping. So, medyo technical ito, so I will link some resources below to explain further what memory swapping is. But to give an idea, the M1 MacBook Pro 2020 uses two pieces of 128GB NAND SSD. While the M2 MacBook Pro 13 base model only uses one 256 gigabyte SSD, so ang ibig sabihin nito, if may mabigat kang task tulad ng photo or video editing, mas mabagal ang MacBook Pro 13 base model as compared to the MacBook Air 2020, dahil sa SSD niya. If you want to get the full performance of the M2 MacBook Pro 13 as advertised, you have two choices. First, buy the 512 gigabyte model, which will cost you an additional 29,000 pesos. Or second, do not multitask, which is a bit strange since you are buying a laptop that says Pro on the label. Both options suck. I do not want to shell out more money as I am working on a budget, and I also cannot work without multitasking. Let's be real. Sa totoong buhay, all people have multiple programs and windows open all at the same time. To be fair, let's make a little adjustment to our statement. The M1 MacBook Air 2020 beats the M2 MacBook Pro 13 2022 for the price of 57,990. So clearly, I am a value buyer since price is a very big issue for me. That's why I bought the M1 MacBook Air 2020. 
When you go to the Apple website, the MacBook Pro 13 base model retails for $74,990, while the 512GB model retails for $86,990. So, you will see the difference. $17,000 and $29,000. Medyo mahirap kita eh ng ganyang kalaking halaga. Let's say we are still strictly comparing the M1 MacBook Air base model and the M2 MacBook Pro base model. That's a 17,000 peso difference that you can save and buy something else to complete your setup. For example, you can buy an external 1TB SSD for around 7,000 to 10,000 pesos only. Since you are buying a 256GB model, getting an external SSD would be a requirement. Let's not forget about dongles. As a Mac user in 2022, you need dongles. Great dongles that offer you options range from 5,000 to 20,000 pesos, depending on what you need. 17,000 is also around the same price as one year's worth of fiber broadband internet. For entertainment needs, you can also buy a 55-inch TV for 17,000 or a new 34-inch ultra-wide screen monitor like yung isa Xiaomi. Or you can buy a motorized standing desk, a new cell phone, or a new camera. Or you can also buy something great for a loved one or go out with the family. Sorry for belaboring what you can spend 17,000 pesos on. But I guess you understand what my point is. If you go to the Power Mac website, the price difference becomes larger. I guess the purpose for this is that they can offer installment options to customers. Instead of 74,990, they are selling the base model M2 MacBook Pro 13 for 80,990. And if you get the 512GB model, the price goes up to 92,990. That's a lot of money. I mostly use my MacBook Air for content creation, trading, productivity, and media consumption such as movies, music, and web browsing. But take note, the Everyday Dad, a big YouTube gadget channel that shoots 4K, 422, is completely being powered by an M1 MacBook Air 2020 base model as well. But if you are a power user such as a professional photographer, video editor, or a graphic designer, I recommend you get the 512GB model if you're going to get the M2 MacBook Pro 13. Or, shell out a little bit more and get either the new MacBook Pro 14 inch or 16 inches. These have extremely better performance and have already implemented the new design language for Mac laptops, which has the smaller bezel. This looks super sleek and provides better use of display real estate as compared to the MacBook Pro 13, which still has the same thicker bezel as the MacBook Air 2020. However, if money is not an object and you are particularly concerned about getting the best device for work, so sabi nga nila, the sky is the langit. You can even get a MacBook Studio with an XDR display. Just to be clear, the M2 MacBook Pro 13 is a great device, even the base model. If you didn't know about the M1 MacBook Air 2020 comparison and all this SSD drama, Probably you wouldn't have felt so hesitant in getting this beast. However, for me, I think it's really strange that a 2022 MacBook Pro model with a new set of processor should be beaten by a cheaper, lower tier model that is 2 years older and has an older processor. So in conclusion, the reason I got the M1 MacBook Air 2020 is that it beats the M2 MacBook Pro in real world situations for a whole lot less money. Pero in the end, that's still your money. What about the new M2 MacBook Air 2022 base model? Can that be an option for my upgrade? Yan ang tanong mo, ba? Actually, I would be more comfortable recommending that to new upgraders than the M2 MacBook Pro 13 base model. Base sa mga initial reports na nakikita ko online, the M2 MacBook Air base model also suffers the same SSD issue as the M2 MacBook Pro 13. However, what's going for the M2 MacBook Air 2022 base model is that everything about it is new. Better display, better sound, better camera, better ports, new colors. Despite it being the most expensive MacBook Air ever, all the new stuff could make up for the increase in price and the SSD drama. 
So that's it for me. If you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button and notification bell. It would really help the channel. Until next time. Bye.